Well, yo, 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 we got breaking news. Breaking news. In an offseason that's been labeled as, it's a disaster. The Bengals are tear. They go get Trent Brown. Former pro bowler. Former Super Bowl champion who protected a really good quarterback. I don't know if you've heard of him before. His name's Tom Brady. But Trent Brown is going to be a Cincinnati Bengal. And the reason that this is significant is that it shows us exactly what the Bengals' plan was this offseason. And it's a small pivot, I think, from what we, what we anticipated. But it shows you what the Bengals value. This is, this is huge. This shows you what the Bengals value. And that is pass rush. And that is protecting Joe Burrow. They get Sheldon Rankins. They don't get DJ Reader. They want a pass rusher. They don't want a run stopper. Oh, they spend money on Trent Brown. One-year deal. Still, the money has yet to come out. But Trent Brown is a Cincinnati Bengal. Is it more of the revolving door at right tackle? Yes. Are we still looking for long-term solutions in that area? Yes, I still think the Bengals would be wise to do that. But they've gotten a guy that is big. They've gotten a guy that's had a lot of success in the league. And now the Cincinnati Bengals, now the Cincinnati Bengals are going to have a guy that's a proven winner and a pro bowler. Casey, your initial thoughts on this? I mean, this is a, a huge signing for the Bengals. I do think that this was the second base, like best case scenario for them too, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that they were able to get a, a deal done this quickly is a little shocking. Right. I didn't think he had quite made it to Cincinnati, but hey, uh, he's here, I guess, and he got a deal done. Good for him. Uh, One-year deal, which means that the pick for number 18 is wide open. I mean, still. they could still go right. get a life tackle of the future. They could go get uh, another best player available like Brock Bowers. I love this signing a lot. This is the best lineman that they brought in in the borough generation mm -hmm. in terms of the stats the numbers when he's on the field he's one of the best linemen in the nfl that's the problem though that's his issue is can he stay healthy well we can still prepare and plan for that in the draft so yeah. good signing so we, we talk about holes that the Bengals need to fill and they've almost filled all of them now except for um a nose tackle i anticipate that they still will do this but as i mentioned this is so important because it shows that the Bengals want to go into the NFL draft with the idea of, hey, we can take the best player. Hey, we can go after not just what we need to fill, but what we can. It's no longer a need. It's a want. And yeah, that, that, that role is still going to be crucial. It's still going to be so important in the future. Everyone hates the stopgap. Everyone hates the revolving door. Me included, Casey included, all Bengals fans included. Yes, I understand this. But it gives the Bengals flexibility. And flexibility is so crucial. You get a proven winner. You get a big boy. You get a big guy. New bodyguards for Joe Nine. Joe Burr. And at the end of the day, we know that out of all the guys that they could have brought in from the free agency, this was the most cost-effective and this has the highest floor. Doesn't have the highest ceiling, but it has the highest floor. This is a former pro bowler. He's old. He's, you know, he's in his 30s. But you get him for a one-year deal. And you can still get a guy of the future. But it gives the Bengals flexibility in the draft. It gives them flexibility what they're trying to do overall. And it, and it fills a hole. It's so important, guys. This is huge. This is huge. And let the the whole lot nose tackle too. Like we were never going to be able to replace it with um, the talent that. Like for me, this move is better than Jonah Williams. You were never going to replace DJ Reader. Right. So this to me is improving. Like we still have a huge whole lot nose tackle, but you were never going to be able to 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 fill that that void there. So this is a great move. This is a great signing. An underrated signing. Um, as long as he stays healthy, I love this move. Um, even if he doesn't stay healthy, you get half a season with him. It's better than nothing. And hopefully you have a rookie there that can just fill in afterwards. But 
yeah, I mean, in the in the one point that that we wanted to hit on, and, and the reason why does this make sense if you anticipate taking a guy at tackle eighteen, which the Bengals still might do. I said they have flexibility; they could take the best player available. But the reason it's so crucial to have a veteran in there is because out of all of the positions that you can play on a football field, quarterback has the highest learning curve when you get to the National Football League. Everyone knows that. That's why for the longest time, you would sit behind a starter and wait your turn. That's not the case anymore. Trial by air. You can still do this at the tackle position. And that's what the Bengals plan on doing. And to, I think they're still going to take a guy early. You can in first, second, third round. They've got four picks in the top 100. This is a good tackle class. So you can get an answer or at least what you think should be an answer for the future. But you can let him learn the position. You can let him get acclimated to the National Football League and sit behind, as I mentioned, a Super Bowl champ, a pro bowler. Trent Brown is going to be the right tackle for the Cincinnati Bengals in the year of our Lord, 2024. All right, guys, make sure to comment what you think about this signing. Go ahead and like, and as always, subscribe to our channel. Reed Mouse, Casey McAllister, you're watching Chatterbox Sports.